Hey, praise the Lord and welcome to the Word Prophet channel once again. This is a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. You know, I have a question for you. Why is it that Trinitarians have such a hard time with Matthew chapter 28 verse 19? Well, the answer is very simple, and I'll tell you very briefly. The reason that Trinitarians have such a hard time with Matthew 28, 19 is because they're imagining that it doesn't say what it actually says. And why are they doing that? Well, because they've embraced a doctrine, a Roman Catholic doctrine, that isn't in the Scripture. And so in order for them to justify that doctrine, they have to imagine that the Scripture says things that it doesn't, and that it doesn't say things that it says. It's just that simple. But to those of us who hear the Word of God, the Scripture says in, in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 9, that the words of God are all plain to them that understand and right to them that find knowledge. So if we'll just read the Word of God as it's written, it's revealed unto babes and kept hidden from the wise and the prudent. So what does Matthew chapter 19, excuse me, chapter 28, verse 19 say? It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It's part of a sentence that makes perfect sense, and, it's, and it means exactly what it says. But in order to get the, a better understanding of it, let's look at the context of the passage. Let's look at verses 18 through 20. Okay? It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All right? Now this is what Jesus said to his disciples, his twelve disciples minus Judas, of course, after his resurrection, and right before he ascended into heaven. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All right. Now, for Jesus Christ to say this, one of two things is possible. Either he is a liar, or he is the almighty God. Okay? All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. No one could say that unless... Either, number one, they are a liar, or number two, they are the Almighty God. And so, obviously, the second is true, and Jesus Christ is the Almighty God in the flesh. As the Scripture says, God was manifest in the flesh. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This is what the Scripture says. And so, we know that God was manifest in the flesh, and that Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. And so, he says, therefore, go ye therefore. What does therefore mean? Well, it's therefore a reason. It means it's because of what was just said. Because of the fact that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. All right? Now, what's the problem with this, with, with Trinitarians? Well, the problem is that Trinitarians like to leave out this word or ignore this word. And by doing that, they're free to imagine that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are three persons just like their Trinity doctrine teaches them. But you see, the Trinity doctrine isn't in the Bible, and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not three persons. And if we leave the word name out of this verse of the Scripture, then it changes the entire meaning of the verse. That's very dangerous. So Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. It's really very simple. So, what is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost? Well, who's the Father? All right. Well, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 tells us that there is, to us there is but one God, the Father. He's the only God. He's the only true and living God. Jesus was praying in John seventeen three, and he said, This is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So there is one God, the Father, and one Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost? Well, if we look here in John chapter 5, Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, and he said, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So if Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name, then what name is Jesus talking about? I mean, did he have a surname like Rodriguez, or Smith? or Hernandez, or Jones? No. His name was just Jesus. Yeshua. Jesus. And so he said, I am come in my Father's name. What does that mean? It means that his Father's name is Jesus. 
Do we need more proof? Well, it's in the scripture. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Wait a second. Being made so much better than the angels, as he, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as you can see by reading the, the context of the passage, the word he here is talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, obtained a more excellent name than the angels. How? By inheritance. And who did he inherit his name from? Well, let's think about that. Did he inherit his name from his mother? No, because his mother's name isn't Jesus. Did he inherit his name from his stepfather? No, because his stepfather's name is Joseph, not Jesus. Come on, boys and girls, who did he inherit his name from? From his father. Just like you inherited your name from your father, the Son of God inherited his name from his father. And so the name of the Son of God is Jesus, and the scripture testifies that the name of the Father is Jesus as well. But wait a second, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Well, who is the Holy Ghost? Let's look at this passage in John chapter 14. We'll start with verse 9. It says, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? This is because Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. He said, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. The Father that dwelleth in me. Are you starting to see? Who was it that dwelt in the Son of God, Jesus Christ? Wasn't it the Holy Ghost? Wasn't it the Holy Ghost that descended upon him when he was baptized? Doesn't the scripture say that, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good? You see, the Holy Ghost was in Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus call that Holy Ghost? The Father. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1, this is where we are. It says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Why did she say this? Because the angel as the angel Gabriel told her that she was going to bear a son. But she said, Well, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She was a virgin. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of of God. Now why was Jesus Christ called the Son of God? Because God was his Father. And who is God? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God the Father. You see, God is holy, and God is a spirit. God is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a person of a trinity. The Holy Spirit is God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the Holy Ghost is the one who begat the Son of God in the womb of a virgin. That's why he's called the Father. You see? So now Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So, once again, is this talking about three persons? No, of course not. It's talking about the Father, who is God, the Son, who is the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost, who is the Father. You see? This is the word that we need to pay attention to in this verse of Scripture, because this is the verse that causes Trinitarians to stumble. This is the word that causes Trinitarians to stumble, because they imagine that it's not there. This, word, this verse, Matthew 28, 19, is not talking about any multiplicity of persons. It is talking about one name. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And what is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Well, as we've seen from the scripture, it's Jesus. May this be a blessing 
to those who have ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen.